BDSM and non-standard relationships. Power exchange and polyamory. Sacred sexuality and fetishes. As, as well, well as, as simply, simply fun, fun kink. kink. You're listening to the Erotic Awakening Podcast Network. Well, hello, listeners. Welcome to the next installment of the Femdom Mystique Podcast with your hostess, wonderful self, Mistress Simone. I am at DomCon LA this weekend, having a fabulous time seeing all my lady friends and catching up with some people I haven't seen in a long time. And I have one of my favorite ladies here with me this afternoon. Thank you. And we're going to do the first installment. <laughs> I of, get to be first. You get to be first of the Femdom DomCon Mystique Podcast interviews. So I'm going to ask you to welcome Genesis of Sanctuary LA. Hello, Genesis. Hello, Simone. It's really good to see you. It is wonderful to see you. It's been way too long. Yeah, it yeah. has. <laughs> it's once a year. Once a year. It's like Christmas. <laughs> we come once a year. But you're not the bad relative, though. <laughs> mm, I could change that. <laughs> oh, that you, would be fun, you though. You know I could change we that. Could, we could be obnoxious. <laughs> There's still time. Honey, we've always been obnoxious. <laughs> we get paid for that. There you go. <laughs> um, so I'm very honored that you agreed to, to be my first victim for the DomCon interviews. Well, um, usually it's just me rambling on for 45 minutes about a topic. <laughs> hey, I can talk. <laughs> I know. So you work really well. It's perfect. I can talk. Well, thank um, you. I'm honored that you asked me. So I would it wouldn't be without you, DomCon without you. So well, so thank let's you. let's start there. Okay. For my listeners who do not know what DomCon LA is or DomCon in general, would you mind giving us a, a small synopsis of it? Absolutely. Um, Mistress Cyan and her partner, Mark Vieira, had come up with the idea when they were at other conventions, and they thought, you know what, let's bring all communities together, mm -hmm. such as the leather community, the lifestyle, and the pro community, and let's have workshops. But really, it came down to about bringing all the communities together, because you and I remember this. I, you've been in there longer than I have, but I won't <laughs> mention yeah, how don't. many years. <laughs> Thanks, you just kind of did, but that's okay. <laughs> but I've been out there too, yeah. and and but we we age well, right? <laughs> so keep going. So we noticed, and I know you know this, that there was some real fractions. Or is yes. it fraction? Is it fraction? Fracture? <laughs> Separation. Separations. Separations <laughs> between the two scenes, and they did not necessarily respect each other, and they didn't understand each other. And Cyan, Mr. Cyan and Mark Vieira thought, you know what? This needs to change. We can have workshops, and we can have an opportunity for everybody to learn something new. And, and in the pro community, we could show each other that we actually can network. Correct. Because there are enough clients out there who not only will see just one mistress, but there are several clients out there who like to be tag teamed by beautiful women, mm -hmm. skillful women, and and there doesn't need to be this animosity and this competition. And I really love that about DomCon because it's like going home for the holidays and seeing the people that you love and you admire. And in the 11 years that I have come to DomCon, I have met and have learned so many wonderful things from experienced doms I kept learning good and you learn something different because everybody has a different way of doing things everybody has a different philosophy mm -hmm. and when you start out you're not sure what your philosophy is yet right it's all eye candy and it is all about well who am I right now but you you know what you like you don't know yet where your journey is going to take you Correct. But you know where you start. And I um, just 
love talking to women in this community to know how they how they came up right and their journey yes that brought them to this point and what awakened their soul right you know made them follow the path of dominance absolutely yeah. and every one of them is beautiful and every one is different it is amazing the diversity of styles. Right. And Don right. is one where one way that you can just see it. Absolutely. And we are such a myriad of women and energy and personalities. Not a single one of us is the same. No. And no, we are not. Not at all. It's, and that's glorious. So uh, something you said in your um, answer there is the philosophy of mm -hmm. domination, which uh, I'm very much aware of and mm -hmm. think is very important for a dominant to find. Absolutely. What Absolutely. is yours? Well, I have a number of them. I had mentioned to you earlier that I'm like, you know what? I don't like titles. It's one thing when I'm in the uh, the session with a particular person and he calls me mistress or goddess. That's one thing. But when I'm here among all the other business women, mm -hmm. just call me Jen. Or Genesis right I I really just don't call me need, Simone yeah don't I really need. don't need that title because actually I have a lot of different identities you know I have like 40 personalities <laughs> but we won't that's, that, that's, that's another right? that there's medication for that but no <laughs> on a serious note I just I love to play mm -hmm. and I love to be you on do. the bottom you I love do it you love play I it's love one thing I yeah. love about you is your glow yeah. from yeah. the play whether you're topping or absolutely. switching it's just you come alive absolutely uh, having seen you you you're, you glow and you play oh, thank and you it's just amazing to watch it mm. is and mm. I remember hearing a lot of different rules like submissives are only supposed to wear this which I didn't have a problem with I love pastels <laughs> and I love being in my underwear, and I love to be naked. Yeah. So there you I don't go. mind that. It's a little easier than what we have to wear, right. given the outfit you right. We and, all right. And when I was mentoring under Cyan, I'm like, I'm still gonna wear a schoolgirl skirt when I dom, <laughs> and I am still going to wear pink. And good for you. If I want to do my scene nude. I will do it because I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned right then. <laughs> exactly. I knew exactly what I wanted. And even when I was, uh, even when I've tried to be a lifestyle sub to, to science, she'll tell you I'm a handful. I'm just very dominant. I could never say that. No, no. no. <laughs> and I love people who do submission properly. And um, it's a big turn on. It's beautiful. It's, a beautiful, it's beautiful thing. And I wanted to be that so bad for Cyan, but I can't. Can't. It's <laughs> just not me. We met each other at a time when I started becoming a switch and learning top skills. And we also, um, I knew she was looking for a sub girl and I wanted to be that. You wanted and to be that. And when I approached her and said, I want to be your submissive girl, she's like, oh my God, I'm so happy. And I'm in love with you. And I'm like, I'm in love with you too. Aww. So those two things happen together. So it, and my going into my top space and learning skills, it was very, very difficult for me to be submissive without getting paid for it. I understand that completely in another context. <laughs> yeah. So that was, and it's actually our 10-year anniversary of when we officially became a couple. Oh, congratulations. So it happened before DomCon 2006. But I will bottom. I absolutely love to bottom, and I love to top. And I really can go. I could be in a very intense scene where I'm the bottom, and then somebody who wants me to play with them as the top, I can do that. I don't know. Which if it's is a beautiful I'm, thing. I don't know because I'm crazy. I don't know. <laughs> it's all those personalities in your brain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Inside. Yeah. 
I, I, I love can't it. do that. I don't have a submissive bone in this body. I, I've tried. I'm sure you can imagine the whole. I understand. I completely understand. Work. I've tried for my husband, and it's just like I end up going, oh, no, no, uh-uh. Five yeah. minutes, we're done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, work. that brings me to a point, too, because we opened a pro house, and all pro house houses traditionally start people who know nothing as Correct. a submissive. Correct. And I as go by that. As a leather tradition. Right. And I go by that. However, have you noticed, as in life, there are always exceptions. Yes. To mm. the rule. And there are many, many wonderful, incredible, professional mistresses who didn't go that path. They're like, I'm not. But, I didn't go that path. Mm. Right. But you went to workshops. I went to workshops and, and I mentored. Absolutely. I, I was mentored. Mm. And so. you probably tried things out. I always try. I still do. Yep, Yep, that fucking hurts. That that hurts. I know how it hurts. Right. (laughs) And there's this philosophy out there, well, you shouldn't do it to somebody if you haven't done it. Well, okay, there's a couple of things wrong with that statement. I (laughs) don't have a set of balls. Well, well, we do have a set of balls, but they're removable. They're removable. So are theirs. Um, (laughs) But... I can't do cock and ball torture on myself. I I, however, how I can feel. do pussy, right, which I like right. with the right person. But there are some things I'm not going to endure because I simply don't want, want to. to. <laughs> but I do have skill, and if I don't have the skill, I bring somebody else along and let me watch or learn and learn, and, right? And so, if it's something you don't want to do, you're like, right. here's my girlfriend who's very good at this. Yes. I will yes. help it, and we'll watch, we'll have a great time, but I'm not interested in that. Absolutely. And I think that when you start as a slave or a professional submissive, you do understand how things work, and you learn once you become a top that you're doing the things too, that there's an empathy already ingrained there, like you know exactly. Okay. You know but what it doesn't through. mean it's right or wrong, right. because I know most professional dominants are very nurturing and yes. they absolutely want you to have a great session. And so back to my point about not everybody's going to follow that path and I have a pro dungeon and there are some women that come in and interview and I just absolutely know they have no experience but they're not going to work as a submissive. Like they are right. not going to get clients. It could be their aesthetic. Like if you look bold, and have striking features like if you're tall, if you are exotic looking, or if there's just a persona that right. you give off where there's no doubt in my mind she's just naturally dominant. I cannot in good faith and with and also with ethics um, put her as a sub Correct. knowing full well she's going to come to work and sit. sit. Right. So, but that well, makes you a very good person to make that decision. Absolutely. And your ethics are an important part of that. Absolutely. Because why would you want to force someone into an uncomfortable role which is just going to backfire on you as a businesswoman? Absolutely. Not it makes work. me mm. a terrible businesswoman. Does right. it make the other people there happy? But I'm like, listen, you I've done your job, you haven't done mine. Right. And that's a famous quote I took from Cyan and she's right. And everybody has a different path. I'm like, if it makes you feel better, I started off as a, as a pro sub. Right. She has started off as pro sub and so and so and so. And there's um, many, many people who have not. So be happy with where you are. Right. Either you love this or you don't. But there's no time to compare yourself to somebody else. Right. Mm. And as a business person, I'm not going to have somebody come to work and not make money. And not make money. It's, mm. I don't like because to mess you with don't people's make money. money. Yeah. Right. It's not a win-win for anybody. No, mm. no. I don't want to mm. mess with anybody's money. And if I see money potential for them at doing another role, then I will get them ready for that role. Right. And there are basic skills that you can learn in five minutes. Right. Mm. But really, you can have all the skill in the world, but it really comes down to your energy. Mm-hmm. When you walk into that room, do you own that room? Right. 
And then the art of it all that I teach with my submissives, and I'm like, I want you to own the room too, but the client can't know you do. Exactly. Mm. You have to let the client think that they own the room while you're still taking care of it. And Mm. I tell my ladies, the ones who are having a hard time with still being a submissive or switch, I'm like, you are learning to be a dom where you are. You need to take in what you're learning you are doing interviewing, Mm -hmm. you're learning how to size up people, and you're learning how to read between the lines, and you are learning how to speak up for yourself, Mm -hmm. and you are learning how to be 10 hundred paces ahead of somebody. Because Which you just summed up our job as a, dom, as a pro dom. Absolutely. In one sentence. Skill <laughs> is great. Skill is great, but it's not everything. That's right. It's, it isn't. It isn't. It's very, very important, but you have to understand energies. Right. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand how to read. So, and that all starts at the ground floor. So tell me about the um, sanctuary in regards to its format. Mm. And okay. when you and Cyan acquired it and, and okay. what it is for those that may want to come to Absolutely. L.A. and visit your lovely establishment, which oh, hopefully well, I'll be doing you. tonight. <laughs> thank you. We acquired Sanctuary Studios LAX five years ago. Has it been five already? It has been. Oh, my. oh we're having a five-year anniversary. Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. It's very mm. exciting. Congratulations. There's <laughs> kind of a bittersweet story to this. There is. It was mm. formerly Passive Arts, which I know yeah. most people are, are very familiar, especially yes. in the L.A. area. But we did all our parties from DomCon there. Mm-hmm. And we knew John, and we loved him, and he tragically passed. Um, I'm not sure thing. if it's appropriate to... No, 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 no that's a kid. So, um, <laughs> Just it was a it devastating was a, loss for It was a us. devastating loss, mm. and the building also burnt. And so it had to be gutted. Right. And the John's estate lawyer approached Cyan. She's going, I have been getting a lot of offers from people in the community who want to keep Passive Arts going. Right. Um, but I'm not comfortable with giving it to just anybody. And I know John thought the world of you, Cyan, and I would like you to come down and, uh, and see the place and talk over About it. the mm. particulars. And at that time, consequently, uh, Cyan and I were looking for a bigger space. Mm-hmm. And we had a couple of people who wanted to invest and possibly become partners with us. And so we were looking at buildings to buy in the Hollywood area. And so this came our way, and it was one of those, oh, oh. Yeah, right. It was very it's very heartbreaking. Sweet. Yes. Very bittersweet. And mm. so we did. And then after we had looked at it and talked about it, I go, Cyan, I want to be a partner. This is what I can contribute. Mm-hmm. I understand the pro house right. aspect. And I used to manage. I understand it so well. And I've been independent. I want to do this. And she's like, I, there was nobody else I would have thought of. So You were a natural. <laughs> <laughs> and so their Sanctuary Studios LAX uh, format has gone through many changes. Because <laughs> it goes <laughs> through many people you changes. Say, what, does, what house dungeon doesn't? <laughs> right. And, and you, it's the first time that I ever managed and been in charge and responsible it's one thing to manage someone else's right but then to start something from the ground up i i used my experience of what i didn't like when i worked you know at the chateau Mm -hmm. and things that i loved john or james about and things that i thought he was right on and then other things that you know i'm like could do differently yeah absolutely Mm. absolutely and those are some funny stories but my, funny stories are good. They're, yes, <laughs> funny, but you wonder how you survived. <laughs> we call it the boot camp. But Sir James of the Chateau was an amazing man, and he's still around. Um, but the Chateau was the oldest dungeon. Mm-hmm. First running started in 1975, and then in 2008 he closed. Mm-hmm. So it's incredibly my long hat, history. Yeah, and I loved that man. Incredibly. And I learned a lot from him. But, um, so we have 
our submissives and we have our switches and we have our doms and we're always hiring but we have a mentoring program good so you do not have to stay a submissive right. just because mm -hmm. you may be making us money we'll talk about it and go okay do you realize when you move up to switch some of your clientele are going to go, go bye bye bleh. right mm -hmm. because it's they don't, it's mental thing. they Absolutely. don't want a switch they want a submissive but mm -hmm. if you play switch right it will be very marketable for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get more clients. You do. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of men out there that want that switch because in their mind, it's like your dom light. But that's not necessarily the case. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> yes. Is I was a mean submissive. <laughs> You know the meanest sadists <laughs> I've ever run into are submissive. My girl had a mean streak, and if I let her top anybody, <laughs> I felt sorry for that person because it was like vengeance. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm very ornery. <laughs> I have three older brothers. Right. Okay, I can see and that. I am, <laughs> I'm a farm girl, and I horses grew up with horses, rope. So don't fuck with you, basically. Yeah, I'm a farm girl. Yeah. You're, if you're a farm girl, you've got a backbone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I am. I'm very ornery, and it's part of my charm. It is definitely. We love you for it. <laughs> so. so let's take it into uh, a little bit of personal respect uh, for you. What got you into this lifestyle? Not necessarily only professionally, but right, right. when did you first Those discover yes, the, the kink in you? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you a little background. I am a survivor of sexual abuse and that terrible 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 and i know there are a lot of people in this scene mm -hmm. so the scene seems to be a magnet which actually can be a very good thing yes however if i would have done this right out of high school i i would not have been okay mm -hmm. i would have been perpetuating a cycle of being the victim and, and being drawn to a perpetrator. Which is something we need to be careful of. Absolutely. In this lifestyle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just became like the nun. I, I, I do not recognize my sexuality. I do not have any. I want that closed off. Because even hugging someone was a trigger for me. It was terrible. Aww. It's a terrible, terrible way to be but so many people who are go through that same thing correct so i had to go through a lot of therapy and a lot of processing and i finally had a boyfriend who didn't think his schlong <laughs> was the magic right <laughs> i i actually didn't tell him at first i just went through the motions because i'd done that already i told people listen sex is very difficult for me blah right. blah blah mm. and they're like i'll take care of you you haven't had mine of course right and it, so it's like whatever it's the line that we get you know you just need yes. to find the right master so i learned yeah. how to mm. orgasm fake orgasm okay. and they never knew you want to sleep this in seattle Absol or is, is that what it, yeah that was something like something that like that harry met sally harry met Sarah. yeah there we go <laughs> and so i dated this one man for a couple of years and we were engaging in lovemaking. And um, about the third time that we were intimate together and he stopped and he turned to me, he goes, you know what? If you don't wanna be present for this, that's fine. But don't go through the motions with me. You know, oh, what's awesome. going on with you? Right. It was wonderful that he realized that. That's oh, absolutely. Amazing. And so I told him my story and he said, okay, we don't need to do that. It's okay. That's I awesome. want to do nurturing things for you, and I want you to understand sex wasn't just for me. It, I want to please you. Mm -hmm. And so then other things happened where he's like, I want to give you a bath, and I just want to nurture you. And it was amazing. You've been a, a wonderful, wonderful guy man. there. It was well, a wonderful man. Then one day I come to his house, and he's like, I got something to show you. Uh-oh. <laughs> and so there was this book. I don't remember the name of it, but it had color pages in it. And I'm looking and it's showing a woman tied up and showing a man tied up. It's showing spanking. It's got mm. definitions. And I'm like, what is this? Right. And he's like, well, I thought we could do that. And I'm like, oh, um, I, I, he's like, bad idea. And I'm like, no, no, 
<laughs> it struck a chord. It, Don't take that away. It struck a chord. Struck a chord. <laughs> so meanwhile, the relationship ended, mm-hmm. but that stayed with me. And I had worked a night job, and I was on my way home, and I passed a video porn store. And I knew exactly what I was going in for. Right. Mm. And so I started renting videos and watching them. And you all, when we had videos? Yes, <laughs> yes. A bunch of spanking videos, BDSM, bondage, all of that. And oh, after the, the end of ones. those, yeah, at the end of those videos were websites. So that became my knowledge base. That's right, there were. Mm. And because at first I'm like, are these actresses that couldn't make it into mainstream and they're doing this? Right. Or are these really people? Is this really a thing? Mm-hmm. And so I would go to websites and I would contact people and I would ask them questions. And then the more and more that I did that, I knew I wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. And I um, hooked up with a mistress out of, out of L.A., I came to visit her a couple of times, and then I knew. And she helped me. Um, it was Mistress Omega, and she That's got a me. name I haven't heard of in a while. Yeah, <laughs> she's a wonderful, wonderful. She was one of my very first mentors. Okay. And she was very protective of I was gonna me. I say, you got lucky. I did. I did. <laughs> You've had some, some good people. Absolutely. And I then contacted James. So she's responsible for getting me... Um, to start at the Chateau, and I did lots of sessions with her, and I did sessions at her private dungeon with her. And then Omega introduced me to Cyan. So... It did come full circle. It did. And then I started working at Cyan's place in Reseda, and then Cyan made me a partner during that time. So... And now we're here. And now we're here. Domcon LA. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Full circle. What is your favorite thing to do as either a top, bottom, goddess, dom? I think my favorite thing is corporal, top and bottom. I love being caned and I love to use the cane. I think the cane is beautiful. It is... And when you do it right and it's done to you right... Mm -hmm. It's amazing, and let me tell you about the cane, why I love it. It is it is difficult. Yes, it is. <laughs> because you take that <laughs> first initial impact, and it's like, oh, wow, I can take, whoa, whoa, shit. Yeah, no, I can't take it. <laughs> and then there's a bite mm-hmm. that radiates out, goes into the bone, and then radiates out, and it's like you feel your skin swelling. And then you're like, okay. And then here <laughs> comes another this. one. But it's the marks that I love to see, Mm -hmm. and then I love to see what I've done. Right. And I usually let a client decide what he wants. You know, he tells me what their limits are. Exactly. And I respect Mm -hmm. those, but I'm like, can I please just introduce you to the cane? (laughs) How many say no? They're like, well, okay. I go, I won't go beyond your limits. I just want you to, it's kind of like when your mom like, just try the broccoli. (laughs) Just try it. You, know? you may like it. Just give, exactly. give it one little bite. <laughs> exactly. Right. So I always try to introduce something new to a client that I've seen for a while to build their repertoire. Because things get boring if you just stay with the same they do. thing. They do. And just like when you're a dom, it gets boring if you do the same thing all the time. You want to acquire new skills. Mm-hmm. You know, new takes on old. <clears throat> Absolutely. No. The, the longer we're in this career, the more I find that you have to come up with new ways to do mm-hmm. the same old activities. Absolutely. Uh, if I was spanking people the same way that I did 25 years ago, I'd be bored out of my mind. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So you want to keep it fresh. Absolutely. Mm. And my other favorite, favorite thing is just verbal. There, there are many sessions that I start off, started off as a dom where I was quiet because I didn't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> you know? I was like, what the fuck to say? What am I supposed to say? And I would go into panic when they say, I'd like to have a two-hour session. I'm like, what am I going to do for two hours? <laughs> I 
I can't talk to you for two hours. <laughs> exactly. What am I gonna say? <laughs> exactly. And I still cringe when they want something longer. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I just figured out how to do two hours. <laughs> what? <laughs> now you want four? <laughs> yeah, okay. Exactly. Ball gag, sensory depth, we're good. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then bondage. I love to be in it, but I just cannot pay enough attention <laughs> to watch how to do it. The bondage that I've done in videos were like, stop camera or the recording and cyan. Okay, I want you to do this. Okay, 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 <laughs> filming. Filming, going back. <laughs> Look, Got you it. on this. It. There, you're never going to get out of that. <laughs> Ooh, love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all right. I understand there. I, just, I am not a rope dom. Mm. It's, it's it's not I for mean, everybody. You, you've known me. I'm not yeah, a rope dom. Yeah. I would. I'm an old fashioned leather dom. Yeah. Give me yeah. shackles, chains. It's the heavy stuff. The heavy just, stuff where I can just throw it at you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I want to beat you, and you want to be beat. This shibari is beautiful. I it's can't beautiful, do but it. I can't do it. We're I can't my do it. No. I can't. I love no. to be in it. No. But I can't pay attention that long. No. No. I've gone to so many <laughs> workshops. And I'm like, I, I don't I've, remember. I've had, like you, I've gone to classes. I, you know, same as you. We have friends who are like, here, let me show you. We'll do this. I've got a basic understanding of Shibari yeah. Down. Yeah. But my rope is for restraining you. Absolutely. It's for keeping you down. Absolutely. It's not for making you look pretty. And then once I get you up there for a half hour, now what am I going to do with you? That's how I, I am too. I'm like, you okay, now. got you tied up. Right. Sign, I got him tied up. What do I do without her? <laughs> Just a minute, <laughs> slut. I'll be back in a minute. Slut, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Are you, you, don't move. Yeah, yeah. I am there with you on the rope bondage. Shabari is beautiful, but not practical for me. Mm -mm, not for mm. me either. And it's just not pretty, but oh well. It's okay. <laughs> so what is your, um, what would you say your ideal submissive would be? And, and, and don't say someone's going to bring you fluffy bunny slippers and no, have a desk ice cream. No. <laughs> no. My ideal submissive, um, I, I've been wanting an adorable submissive girl. Oh, yeah. But I want her to be ahead of me, actually, <laughs> and think before I start thinking of what I want. You know, you, you want a service, absolutely. Someone who can absolutely. do preemptive service. And someone I would that love I can that. play with. Somebody wants play and that I can play with right. and mm. that I would. But it is a it's a big responsibility because these are human beings and this is how I make it very simple. The doms are the parents mm -hmm. and the submissives are your children. And that's not a bad thing. No. That's a beautiful relationship. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And and there are submissives because most of the time they have a lot of responsibility and a right. lot of things and they're used to being on top of everything and they want to zone out and they want to have somebody go okay I need you to think about this one thing right mm -hmm. and I need you to do this one thing and when I've had a sub when when they were sick I took care of them mm -hmm. and when I was as, sick, as a good dom would mm -hmm. yeah and when I was sick they took care yeah, of me yeah. and when I was Cyan's sub and she was sick there were boundaries as to how I could take care of her. I couldn't tell her, you have to go lay down. <laughs> I brought her tea. I brought I her medicine. I would see that probably not working well. <laughs> no, it doesn't work well. I was going to say, I didn't see that working well. It does, even though I'm not a submissive and I still tell her things. She's like, I'm not accustomed to people telling me what to do. And I'm like, really? Well, either am I. <laughs> <laughs> this be interesting in your household. <laughs> it is. Be a fly on the wall there. It is. And so when I'm sick, she's like, you need to go to bed. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. That's fine. And I want matzo ball soup, not chicken <laughs> soup. Okay, cool. You got it straight now. <laughs> yeah, I love to tell her what I want. So, but yes, my ideal submissive would be somebody that I can nurture and somebody who can think about what I need before I even need it. Right. Mm. And then someone to play with because I love to you play. You love to play. <laughs> I love to play. And I love the little girls. You know, the ones who want to be a little girl. I love that. It's adorable. Well, I think that kind of resonates with you a little bit. Absolutely. Because mm. I was like the little girl. Right. I like that little play too. Right. I love the school girl. And now girl. you can be the, the mommy with school girl. Absolutely. Or the older sister. Or the older sister. Older or the sister, bully. The bully. Who takes <laughs> on... <laughs> Somebody else. There's your other you. personality. I'll be your bodyguard. 
And I only get to beat up on you. Right. Exactly. Nobody else can pick on you, but I can pick Absolutely. on you. I can do whatever I want. Absolutely. <laughs> that yeah. makes sense. It's funny. It's just funny. So, DomCon. Mm. Yes. yes. It's it's changed a lot. We have grown a lot. Absolutely. Um, Always. What would you say to someone who's never been here before? and wanted to come how would you describe it and why should they attend Mm. okay well i'd say if you know nothing of bdsm but you saw 50 shades of gray (laughs) that's great that's great that has been great for us actually i go then you're in for a wonderful weekend because there are workshops about anywhere from the BDSM 101 type of things to dynamics in relationships to protocols to the differences between a fetishist Mm -hmm. and a submissive and what all of these terms mean and you'll see all the types all different types of implements that Mm -hmm. we use and how we use them you will also hear about how we are very responsible and respectful of people and boundaries yes Mm. and that it's a community and we're we love what we do and we and it's not so much what we do it's who we are Mm -hmm. this is a thing just like a heterosexual is a heterosexual and a person who knows they're gay well there are people who just know they're a fetishist there are people who just know they're kinky Mm -hmm. and there are people who just know they want to wear leather mm-hmm. and they want to conduct themselves in a way and have a certain lifestyle that is not your traditional man and woman and 2.5 kids. kids. We have dungeons either in our basements mm-hmm. or in our bedrooms and our sex is not the same. Correct. Mm. And our love is not the same. It's different. And that we can have multiple partners and they all have a a job and a place. Mm -hmm. And I think what you'll learn too is that kinky doesn't necessarily mean deviant. Correct. Although I do like the word deviant. Well, I do like the word deviant. And I, I, (laughs) I do appreciate movies that kind of bring this to the forefront, Mm -hmm. however, I still want to be a little bit on the subversive side okay. because that's what's beautiful about it. And okay. we do invite people, but we don't, there are so many people who don't really have an opinion on it, but they don't really need to know about it. And I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. People ask me questions and I will tell them, but I won't necessarily go up and say what I do if right. it, because I kind of feel out. You feel out where you are. I feel out where I am. I feel where out I where am. I am. And who yes. am I talking to? Yes. And how receptive do you need to know? Yeah, Kind of like absolutely. on a basis of, you know, need to know. Absolutely. Like the military uses. Abs- absolutely. <laughs> and if I do say that, because sometimes it's just unavoidable, I educate the best that I can and make it very simple and precise and what it is not and what it actually is. Right. Mm. And we're just human beings like anybody else who needs love Mm -hmm. who needs respect who needs a certain something to express themselves Mm -hmm. i also say this is my art this is my art this is absolutely my art if you look at what we do the human body is our canvas absolutely Mm. and we are pouring our soul out and sharing Mm. our soul with who Mm. we're playing with Mm -hmm. and when we're teaching we're giving of ourselves. There are people here that I see once a year that know a lot about my life that my mom doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Although my family and friends where I grew up know exactly what I do. I I made that very clear from the beginning. And I'm like, I'm sorry if it disappoints you. No parent wants their daughter who's been to college to be a dominatrix. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I got that whole talk to. Right. And then right. when I explained things to my mom, I said, okay, so look, here's my degree. 
here's how much I can make with my degree mm -hmm. and not enjoy my life and not enjoy Absolutely. the passion and do what I want. Absolutely. Be stuck in an office in a cubicle. Absolutely. Here's what I'm doing. Yes. I love what I do. I have great relationships. And here's how much I make. Exactly. That shut my mother up like that. And the new, <laughs> and the new it's buzzword. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And the new buzzword of this time is like authentic. I'm oh authentic. My God. I am, and there's really That's something. That's the hipster's fault. You know that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> but it really pinpoints because you are living your life fully yes. and mm -hmm. actually being who you are and in charge. Now, my parents fully support me. I had a diff. I did not come Which is out. Wonderful. Yeah, I did not come out with a degree because I was, I was so lost. I had no idea. I'm very smart. I like school. But my mom and dad are like, it's been six years, pick something. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm paying for school. <laughs> yes, and what's, we're helping you and we'll continue to help you. <laughs> but you're floundering. What is it you want? I go, I want to do everything and I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. I don't know when I know. And they're like, you know. And then you found. And then I found, but it was years later. So I went from job to job and I would enjoy them for a while because I'm a people person and I would make friends right. and very mm. close relationships, but I'm not a follower and I'm no. not a team player. And that is very hard for those of us that are like you and I are similar yeah. to do something like that. Yeah. You know, I worked retail. Yeah, I, I did from too. From 15 to 25. Yes. And, you know, manage stores, district manager. Yeah. I can't do the whole rah-rah team player. I Let's can't meet either. our goals. Yes. I'm like, this is not for me. Yeah. I don't <laughs> mind meeting goals, but if I'm on a team and I'm working my ass off and the team gets the credit for what I did, I did. and they're fucking up, no, yeah. I'm not happy with that. <laughs> Exactly. Not at all. It's like, Not wait, a minute, a they way. fucked up. I did all the work and no, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, so sometimes there were many jobs I was fired from because I have a mouth. And I don't kiss ass. Mm -hmm. And Which I just something we love about you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I don't do the PC thing. I sit there in front of human resource and I go, he's a dickhead. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what? That's not wrong. And my you mom is, but yes. You can't talk like that. Yet. Exactly. Right. And it you're like, but he is a dickhead. And we all know he's a dickhead. So why can't I say it? Exactly. He's not being a team player. Fuck you, team player. Fuck you. I want a different team. <laughs> right. <laughs> Give me the team where I can say he's a dickhead. Give me the fucking ball. <laughs> And my mom's from the corporate world, and she's like, I would have fired you a long time ago. You can't do that. You just simply cannot do that. And I'm like, yeah, I know. This isn't for me. This isn't for me. No. But anyway, my parents are very happy and excited for me and yeah. can see that I'm very happy. Mm. And that's took my a parents, long time. And my parents were the same, yeah, same way. Yeah. And I think that's very, very lucky. Not everybody gets that. No, and, no. And it's a shame that people aren't more open and accepting to the differences oh. in how we live and our love and absolutely and my mom and dad got the triple whammy within me moving away mm -hmm. there there was the thousand mile difference right and then by the way i am no longer catholic i am wiccan right i'll still go to church with you guys i won't burn or anything or melt but you sure this is my I wonder every time I yeah walk. exactly exactly <laughs> and i'm gay, gay. <laughs> <laughs> wow you so your poor parents pass the salt please <laughs> This is a Thanksgiving dinner, yeah, by the exactly. way. By the way, since you're all here, I truly did that. I'm like, since you're all here, you probably have been wondering why I never have a boyfriend except for, you know, a few times. And So here we go. Here we go. I am gay, actually. I've known it for quite some time. And wonderful. Yeah. So they're like, all right. Hey, they seem to take it with a grain they of did, salt, so to speak. My brother's like, well, I'm going to call you a lesbo, so get used to that. And I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call you ass hat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, why? Okay. So I have a wonderful family, and I think that makes a big difference. It does. And when it, you're in this scene, because then you're not searching for that parent. Right. You're not searching for a family. Even yeah. though we are We are a family. family. We have a different family. We have a different type of family. That is feeding a different part Right. Of you now, how would you explain that? Because I've gotten this question from mm -hmm. many people who are in the lifestyle or they're on FET, right? And they're you know reading our profiles. 
How would you explain to them what a family is okay. within our community? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you have what you would have as in dynamics. In leather, there is master or mistress, mm-hmm. and they have a slave. And there is almost like a military dynamic with them. But then there's a whole nother set right. of dynamics. There could be a daddy, daddy boy. There can be a daddy who's female, mm-hmm. but identifies male-like, mm-hmm. sir-like. And then there's boy, B-O-I, who's born female, not quite sure they're going to transition, but maybe not even thinking about that, but like have this this uh, male identity that they like. I love boys. Uh, yeah, me too. Me boys. too. They're, they're my favorite. But <laughs> it is in a way like a family away from your family of origin. Mm-hmm. It's a whole nother level and what you hope when you have a family is that they got all their nurturing in the original family and sometimes that's not the case and sometimes it doesn't work out when there are people in your family who just haven't got that and then they rely on you right I had to that give experience. you everything and you want to do that for you but it, it's not it's not going to work they need to have some sort of counseling right. and have their head together when you come into this community and you're trying to get into a relationship just like in vanilla if you try to be in a relationship and you're not okay and you're not okay with who you are and you're you don't love yourself or even respect yourself no relationship will work out. Right. You're still going to have the same issues yes. if it was a vanilla relationship. Absolutely. Just because there's a bit of BDSM or a lifestyle component, those issues are still going to be there. They need to be resolved first Absolutely. before you find what you're looking for. Absolutely. Because toxicity happens, and this is a magnetic pull for toxic relationships. And oftentimes you always hear about the doms being toxic, but there are just as many, mm-hmm. if not more, toxic slaves and submissives. And you have to get your mind healed yes. and your body and soul healed before you can enter into relationship. You cannot expect this type of family and the leather to heal you. Right, from what it, happened with your other family. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's a different, it's a different. And you both have to contribute. Mm-hmm. Both have to, and that's the difference in your family of origin. You're the child. You don't contribute. You're a child. Right. They're taking care of you. And these leather families and the lifestyle community families who are not necessarily leather. Correct. They're, everybody has a role and everybody's responsible. Mm-hmm. So that's where it's different from your traditional family of origin. That's a you good know. way to put it. Yes. I like that. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. And when... There are concise um, rules and guidelines to follow, and everybody knows their part. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. It flows. Absolutely. It, it and flows like a well-oiled machine. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And if there are, it, it has to absolutely be known that there will be no jealousy right. tolerated. Right. And if you can't handle that, then you need to see a therapist and work on those issues, and I'm not your therapist. Right. Mm. I'm a guidance for you in other areas. And I'm not going to solve all those problems for you. You have to solve them. You have to solve them with yourself. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And it's it's hard. You know, we all have our issues. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Everybody has issues. If we didn't have issues, then we wouldn't be living. Absolutely. Someone who doesn't have baggage has not experienced. And that's how you can use this to find your power. And I have. And I... Funny enough, found my power in being the submissive. Interesting. Okay. And I found my sexuality and my sensuality because that had been missing. I denied that. Right. And so it has been wonderful for me. But I was at the right place. At the right time. At the right time. Like and I the said, right people. <laughs> 30 years ago, I would not have been okay. I, I would just been, I would have been continuing that 
But you've come so far. Cycle, I mean, that self-harm cycle. You Absolutely. are such a beautiful woman. And have Thank come you. So Thank far. You. So I have some last minute questions for okay. you. These okay. are going to be fun ones. These are okay, going to be cool. really quick cool. ones. So cool. what is your favorite curse word? <laughs> quick ones. <laughs> don't do, 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 do. There's so many. There's so I many. Know you, I know you and cursing. So. Oh, I know. Well, you got to pick one. <laughs> Fucktard. <laughs> okay. All right. What is your favorite toy? <gasps> the cane. What is your least favorite toy? Metal. Metal. Anything. <laughs> Here, I thought you were going to say electric. <laughs> no, I love electric. Oh, <laughs> okay. Love electric. All right. Um, what is your pet peeve? One pet peeve with a submissive. Mm. Oh. Um, Debbie Shirt. <laughs> Neediness. Okay, agree Needy. with that. <laughs> with that. Uh, what would you describe your style in, in one word? Mm. One word. Progressive. Yeah, that's a good one. If you weren't doing this for a career, what would you be doing? I would, I was considering before this. That's not one word. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. (laughs) Bed and breakfast. That's two words. That's two words. That's three words, actually. Catering. It's okay. okay. Yeah, forgot. I'm a talker. I know. I love that. You limit me and I can't handle it. You can handle that. Well, now I have a happy podcast on my head. One last question, very quick. Um, What would you give advice to upcoming pro doms? What would be the one sentence, the one piece of advice that every new pro dom should no. Branding. Okay. Their image. image. I, I'm saying, you know where my head went. Well, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like oh, you know and what? I saw that. I saw that. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Image. Image. It's like, <laughs> you don't want to teach them that right away? What are you talking about? Oh, the minute they come out. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, no. Like, okay, I was on a farm. We were good until then. <laughs> All right. So branding. Mm, yes. So market their image. Absolutely. Know their style and work it, work it, work it, baby. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was wonderful. So thank you for joining me for this segment of the Femdom Mystique. I'm very happy you were my first thank dumb you. victim. I am too. <laughs> I'm too. I don't follow directions well. Did you notice that? You're, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Neither do I. We work really well like that. So that's awesome. But listeners, this has been Miss Simone with Genesis at DomCon LA. Uh, look for this uh, in the next week or so, if not sooner, if I can get off my ass and not party so hard. <laughs> They keep yeah. me busy here. We yes. keep doing stuff. We're very busy. <laughs> More champagne. More champagne. Boy, where are you? Damn. So anyway, Femdom Mystique signing off from Domcon LA. Thank you. Thank you.